All right, so. I have to give you a little bit of credit for this. Yeah, we can overdub it later. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any crazy stories about. Oh, wait, no, I do. I got, I got robbed at the gunpoint, mugged. Yeah, good for me, but I ain't checking for them. No. <laughs> it's a sleazy real estate, guys. New flash. But. <laughs> All right, so another episode of the EP Podcast here. I have one of our actual old guests that we've had uh, in one of our other episodes, none other than Troy Bernard. OG, back for a second. Per usual, per can't miss out the handshakes. How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. I can't complain. So we originally had uh, another guest scheduled for today's podcast, but you know, life happens sometimes. And so we pivoted and decided to have just an internal one or home team, whatever you want to call it. And so we're just going to touch on some recent topics, uh, things such as um, the House overturning Biden's attempt at doing the loan forgiveness program. That's right. You know, a little bit about, we know we recently just had Independence Day. <clears throat> Happy 4th, or pass at least. Uh, the, new cool thre- the new Threads app, the new Threads app by Meta. Uh, the Zuckerberg-Elon Musk fight. We're going to talk <laughs> a little right. bit about... Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. That's going to be a fun one. That's a thing? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Huh. Exactly. And that's where we're going to dive into it. Okay. Uh, we're going to touch on a little bit of your experiences with uh, MLMs. Yeah, MLMs. That's right. That's and right. Uh, lastly, we're also going to touch on interest rates and uh, mm-hmm. the new laws that have gone in place and what we know about it. But we're just, we know, we're not, we might not get to all of them. We might get to some. Uh, but we're just going to play it by ear and see where it goes. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Okay. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends uh, for many more episodes to come. We are very excited for future guests that we have lined up, and it should be a good one. But, Troy, so for those that haven't seen your episode, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Just give us like your quick 30-second elevator pitch. Sure, sure. So, Troy Bernal, born and raised in Delaware. I was in the area for pretty much all my life and went to college here, started doing business and realized that it wasn't really something I liked. So I pivoted and started doing real estate, which is what I'm doing currently. Uh, it's it's kind of like a life passion that I've, I've found and I like working with people. We are doing many ventures that are in a sense real estate, but also pivoting from the area. So we're really just trying to be creative and, and trying to sprout and, you know, it's find new horizons pretty much okay yeah so and then you're going to be talking to us about the more real estate side of things and stuff like that so just based on the topics that we have right now should we start with more real estate stuff kind of like get our get our feet wet a little bit we can we can okay so what what do you have for us in regards to real estate what's going on in the market these days so from last time i talked uh not too much has changed for buyers and sellers it's still a pretty hot market inventory is still pretty low sellers are having a really good time selling buyers are having a really hard time buying so the only thing that's changed may be that new biden administration where some people with good credit scores may be penalized with some interest with some interest and possibly some mortgage fees and people with bad credit score may actually be incentivized with less interest and less mortgage fees yeah so before we dive into that, have uh, have interest rates gone down by any chance? I haven't been in touch with that in a while. What are interest rates at these days, like a 30-year fix? They're, depending on your credit, if you have good credit, they could be anywhere from six and three quarters to like seven and maybe seven and a half around there. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it hasn't changed too much. From no. More, yeah. no, it hasn't so, changed yeah. too much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And is uh, are you finding currently like a lot of like buyers or like more sellers are people selling their houses at all right now or what's going on yeah i mean most people that are selling right now kind of have to because if they're selling that means most of them have to buy again which uh would put them in in a tough position so it's it's a hit or miss with sellers buyers obviously they're in a different position a lot of first-time home buyers a lot of people that still have to buy and it's still tough for them it's still putting in multiple offers in on a lot of different properties and losing out uh, having to overpay. Um, yeah, still not, not much has changed. What does that look like for, is that just for like the average home buyer? Is that, does that vary from investors? 
What is have you dealt with any investors recently? What what are, are they like holding put? Are they holding cash? Are they seeking deals? So what, what's going on with the investors? It's interesting. Investors are they're still moving full fledged forward. Not much has changed for them either from last time I was on. They're still buying. Um, I would say they're probably not holding as much. They're probably flipping more right now. Yeah. Uh, hard money is has increased their down payment requirements. So now it's about 20% for hard money, which is- Are you which, serious? Yeah. Yeah. Typically, Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. About 20%. And then I was just working with a hard money guy this week on one of my investors, and it was 20% down- uh, requirements and then with the origination points they charge plus their fees and all these back end charges, it was going to amount to eight percent of the purchase price on top of the <sighs> on top of the twenty percent of down Jesus. payment. So it was insane. I mean, it was we were looking at a two hundred and forty five thousand dollar project uh, after repair value on that was like three sixty five. We ended up crunching the numbers and we were like, wow, the hard money it, at, at that purchase price, the hard money wouldn't make sense. And we would he, the, my investor would probably net close to like 15, 20 K, which is very risky, yeah. very yeah. low, very yeah. low margins, very risky. So we, we ended up not. Yeah. I advised them not to take that deal. R- real quick. So before we that, before we go into that further. So just for those that don't know, what exactly do you mean by hard money? Hard. We know what hard money is, but for the viewer, it might not. So. Yeah, hard money. So if you think about buying a house normally, you, you would apply for a mortgage loan with a mortgage broker or your local bank. Hard money is, is like a special loan product uh, specifically for investors who plan on purchasing a property uh, and fixing it up and then reselling it within a three, six, or 12-month period. The loan is usually called within... Again, three, six, or 12 months, you would call that a balloon payment. And then within yeah. that interval, you would make interest payments only to the uh, to the lender. Um, on top of what I just mentioned earlier with the 20% down payment and the 8% uh, origination fee and, and cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, so hard money is pretty much, it's uh, if you're in the business of real estate and looking at distressed properties and purchasing them to fix them, hard money would be pretty much your go-to tool so you don't lock up all your capital, you lock up other people's capital and you do what you got to do. Right. Or as uh, Rich Dad, uh, Robert Kiyosaki would say, OPM. Other people's money. Other people's money. Exactly. Other people's money. It's the only way to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. So diving back into the whole, uh, 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 the whole government thing, doing with the interest rates and incentivizing uh, lower credit users versus and pe- penalizing higher credit users. I mean, yeah. What exactly is going on there? Yeah. So I don't even fully understand what's going on. I mean, I read up a little bit on it. It's really just the. The home buyers right now with lower credit scores are having such a hard time even breaking into the market. Mm-hmm. Biden's administration is more um, likes to be more lax on these kinds of issues, and they like to help out, you know, the the lower income people, yeah. um, demographics that have a hard time purchasing homes. So they decided this was a good plan to roll out. So that's that's really my best understanding of it right now. What I do understand is that if you do have a, a higher credit score you may now be paying higher mortgage fees, whether that be origination or just other back-end fees, uh, and then also a higher interest rate possibly. So I was reading that if you had a um, 400, if you buy a $400,000 house and your mortgage payment is, let's say, $1,500 now, and you had good credit, now your mortgage payment may be an extra 40 bucks from that, you know, Mm -hmm. 1,500 Mm -hmm. bucks, so maybe 1,540. And then, but real quick, I mean, 40 bucks may sound like nothing to some people, you know, it's like 40 bucks is like, to some people, that's barely a night out, you know, that, that, that that's like an entry fee to some nightclubs, you know, yeah, yeah. but 40, <laughs> we're talking about 40 bucks every month for 30 years. For 30 years, exactly. That adds up to a lot of money. It, it does. Yeah. And then in contrast to that, people with lower credit scores, as you were saying, would, it would be the reverse. So, the you reverse. know, their mortgage would be 40 bucks less. Right. Yeah. Right. So. What are your thoughts on that? I really don't I really don't understand it enough to to speak on it, but just kind of looking at it from a bird's eye view with a limited understanding, it it's tough. It's tough on both ends because if you if you work really hard to get your credit score up with which I know a lot of people, you know, with good credit scores, I like to think I kind of have decent credit. I would personally be upset uh, having yeah. to pay more and and be penalized. And the way I would look at it if I was in, in that position is, well, now I'm incentivizing 
their purchase pretty yeah. much it's like it's i was gonna out of say my I, I realized i just asked the real estate guy <laughs> how do you feel about more people come being able to come into the market now yeah. <laughs> so, i mean from your yeah. as a real as a realtor perspective it's probably good then right because yeah. it means that more people are going into the pool of potential clients it, right in a sense yes because because most people don't have good credit yeah so so it, it, it kind of and that's i think that's why they kind of rolled this out because because most people have not so good credit or yeah. kind of decent credit. Yeah. So I think that in the, if you look at it that way, it, it's okay, it's good. But again, you're going to make a lot of people yeah. upset on the other side. So um, I'm in real estate myself, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm more like in the investor side. Uh, my opinion on this, if I may, is you know how I'm looking at it just from a very general perspective is that we are – we are saying bad to the people that have practiced and worked on getting their credit score up and their financial, you know, capabilities up. And Mm -hmm. then we're saying bad to them, but then we're, you know, giving, uh, going with open arms to the people who haven't. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I'll give them the defense that houses are harder now to get than before, just, just based on, prices interest rates and just a mix of things Mm -hmm. and inventory and all that kind of stuff but for me it's like looking at looking at it from um you know let's say if when you were let's say you have a uh when you were a little kid let's say you had a brother right same age as you yeah right you were the good you were the good boy and he was the bad boy right but he would get a pat on the back this no matter what he did but with you as the good boy would get yelled at even despite how even because you didn't do good enough despite yep. doing good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? I get I get exactly what you mean, and, and you wouldn't get acknowledged for doing good. Right. You would only get acknowledged for doing bad. It's right. Yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah. I'm not, you know, totally upset by it. I get it. You know, you just got to pivot and play the game. But yep. it's definitely interesting to see uh, the direction that that may go into like the next five, ten years. Yeah. See what that's gonna look like. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, in regards to that. There's something uh, other in regards to just financial accountability. Um, recently, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys remember during the pandemic uh, it, for the students who had loans, you know, Biden had rolled out uh, what's it called? Like a loan forgiveness program. Right. Yep. And essentially you had to apply for it. And they even paused uh, what's it called? Uh, student loan payments. Yeah. They even paused it because you would get no interest rates. The students would stop paying them. And and so you know students were incentivized to not pay because they would pay no interest on it yeah and at the end of the road they were hoping you know what why am i even why should i be interested in paying it at all because it might just get thrown out the window so you know (laughs) just let that you know kick that can down the road exactly recently i think like less than two weeks ago the u.s house of representatives actually overturned that that proposal of biden and is actually no longer going to happen and i believe also um student payments are going to resume. I'm not going to lie. When I found out about the news, I was in a car with someone that has student debt. I, you know, I don't have any student debt and I might've overreacted a little bit. (laughs) I was like, I might have like an evil, like, ha, you know? So it was very similar to the real estate thing, right? You know, before I went into real, I mean, before I went into school, you know, I took a year off from from high school to college, and I, I certainly did not want to get a degree. And we've spoken about this at your episode. Yeah, is I, I didn't want to get a degree that's not gonna give me my return on my investment because that's what education is—is is exactly. an investment. Exactly. And and then, but I also knew that with that came a financial obligation. You know, tuition, books, um, you know, just other expenses as a as a student. And I, you know, had because at the end of the day, that fell on me, right? So I had to financially prepared to that you know pick up extra shifts at work or work a double job and then also learn how to budget increase my increase my money decrease my expenses and all that stuff like that and and thankfully for that i you know didn't have to acquire any student debt i mean i'm still in school still no debt and i'm very thankful for it because it taught me a big lesson right but when that happened i was like i was like okay I was a little upset. I'm not going to lie. I was like, because it goes back to that same thing, the example we made of, of, of the good brother and the bad brother, right? Right. It was like, damn, I, I you know, I put in all that work. I uh, And then this other person who has a, let's say, some sort of like art, you know, degree, 
yeah. that accumulated God knows how many thousands of do- hundreds of thousands of dollars if if maybe at that yep. you know so like nope you're good because I was thinking that's the road the, the road we're gonna head over I'm like yeah. shit is that fair though you know right. is that fair right right so I was very upset when I uh, I'm not very but I was like shit all right because at the end of the day you know I don't have any debt so I wasn't really upset about it I was like fuck you know in yeah. terms of being equal I looked but, at it the same way yeah when, when I was in college. After I did get full rides, but that wasn't on, until later. Oh, did you? I didn't know that. I ended up getting full Shit, rides, nice. but but not getting started. I had no full ride. I started at uh, at Dell Tech, mm-hmm. uh, straight. You know, maybe like two years after high school, and it was it was all out of pocket for a good two years out of pocket. I had to get a a, a job and and pay for it. And it's tough when you're you know eight what nineteen twenty year old having to pay for your own college. I didn't have you know parents that were able to do it for me. So I did do it for a good two years. And then after I got my grades up at the community college, I ended up getting full rides at the uh, four-year uh, college. But it, it, it would make me upset if if I were to hear that other, you know, other people were able to just get that pardoned, for, yeah. you know, just because somebody over at the White House signs right, a paper and right. you're like, yeah, you don't got to pay. You know, so I, I could see both sides of the spectrum. You know, I, I would have loved to have mine pardoned as well. So, right. you know, it, it's hard to argue right. both sides, but... Yeah, you know, I could see the frustration. So, and even even out, let's look at it from from a, even outside of a bigger picture perspective. Yeah, Let, let's go back to 2020 when the government was giving out money like it was monopoly money, right? Huh. Right. Yep. So with like with uh, what what do they call it? Stimulus checks. Stimulus, right? Yeah, stimulus, stimulus checks, right? And they were just essentially incentivizing people to stay home because some people would get paid more being at home than they would working, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. and. And so, but what, so people thought, you know, this is free money. This is free money. This is awesome. I get to stay home, do what I want, get more money, yep. don't have to work. And, you know, we're, we're just chilling. But what did that look like in the long term? You know, we started paying expensive gas. We started paying expensive food. Everything else and prices started going up. So in all reality, it, none of it was free. Yeah. We just didn't pay for it up front. Exactly. So I take that to, to the, to the, what's it called? To the, stu- to the loan forgiveness program. You know, that's. They were, I think they were aiming for like around four hundred million dollars to forgive. That's a lot of money. Wow. That's a lot of money. Wow. That's a lot of money to yeah. forgive to to um, for, yeah. for debt and and my apologies here for people that didn't do better at planning their finances. You know, I get 100%. it. You know, you're 18, 19, going into a college. They just tell you, hey, sign here. Now we're going to give you access to a quarter million dollars yeah. to take on a degree that we'd not know whether or not you're going to use after college. But, you know, yeah. approach a bank uh, approach a bank like that. Hey, I have a great business here idea here that could make me millions. All I need is a quarter million. They'd be like, fuck no. Exactly. Right. But yeah. in point to what I was saying is that, is that, we think it's four hundred million dollars going to be forgiven, but no, because how is the where does the four hundred million come from? From taxpayer money. Yeah, right? right. So even even the people who it's getting forgiven to, they work. What 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 happens with, with uh, compensation? It gets taxed. Mm-hmm. So they're they're paying it on the back end without without even knowing. Right. And you know the only way you know that is by being financially literate, right? Agreed. And that those that are not are 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 just be like oh. This is an amazing contributions to me. But you know yeah. what? You know what? I was talking, having this conversation with someone, with someone the other day. Same person I was in a car. You're, like, you're going to be proud that this thing did not get forgiven. You know why? Because you're going to pay this off. And you're going to be proud that you paid it off. And in the long term, you're going to look back and be like, shit. You know, I'm glad I did that. Because you know why? If they didn't and it did get forgiven, then what are we looking at potentially in the future? Maybe even more expensive houses, maybe even more expensive car prices, gas, more expensive food, more expensive, whatever the case. Yep. So while they're not paying it as a student, mm-hmm. they're paying it with everything else. Yup. Yup. So, I agree with that. So that, that's, that's my take on it, you know? But what, what do you think, just for me telling you that, like, does that do anything for you? Well, it, it makes perfect sense. And, and my biggest takeaway from what you just said is that it would give them the uh, the discipline and the the state of mind to look back and say, wow, I did that. I did that on my own. Right. Versus when you get something handed to you, you, you there's a sense of entitlement. So, yeah. so if it was if it's given to you, you're not going to cherish it as much as if you worked for it. Right. And, and, and I could say that just from looking back at my life, everything Everything that I've ever cherished and and just thought highly of, I'd have I have to work really hard for it. 
if something comes easy, it, it doesn't mean too much to me. Right, right. You know? 100%. So, yeah, yeah. So that's the way I look at it. And not to mention the amount of fucking debt we have in this country. You know, what are we like in how many trillions of debt now? I don't, I don't even know how many. I, know, I can't count that high. You know, uh, hold on. Let's let's look up the the U.S. debt clock. Is, is that what they call it? Something like that? U.S. Yeah. U.S. Um, national debt clock. I think it's like 30 something trillion. I think the U.S. national debt right now is thirty two trillion dollars. That's close. That close. Thirty two trillion dollars. You know? Yeah. And then they, they break this down beautifully here and I'll, and I'll share it on the video. But. Dude, I mean, but, you know, who do we owe this to? Like, people, like, in China and stuff like that? What happens if we default on this shit? We're just going to keep raising the debt ceiling? Like, like... Like okay, so what happens if you stop making the house payment, the 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 mortgage, the mortgages on on your house? What happens? It gets taken away from you. So what if that? So all that money that we have, like it's being loaned out from all the places. You know what is that going to happen? Eventually, people are going to take over us. Right. So that's why bigger picture. So yeah, it gets forgiven now, yeah. my friend. Yep. But you, you, if you don't pay that in the long term, you know who will? Your kids, your kids' kids, and your kids' kids' kids. Yep, like you said. Keep, is that what you want? kicking the can down the road. That's it, what, never, that's all it, it, is. it never pays. Yep. So yep. It, it pays to be financially smart. And you know what? Just pick up a book. Best book I've ever come. Uh, best one-on-one book. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki. I preach that book like I fucking get paid to preach for it. Just watch <laughs> it. It's easy. Assets, liabilities. Money in versus money out yep, is yep. what you keep. That's it. And as long as you bring in more money than what you're taking out, then you're above water. 100%. It's, called, it's called living below your means. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's 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 that that's that situation. Mm-hmm. Man. So we're, we're we're okay. So just based on what we did, anything else you want to close on that before we move on to the next topic? Just to end on that note, what you just said, it, it comes down to us being a consumerist nation. Mm-hmm. It, it's what we're known for. Amer- you know, America back in like two, in the 2000s was known for, you know, loud, obnoxious American driving a Hummer. Mm-hmm. It, 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 nothing, <laughs> not much has changed except yeah. now we just have phones and everybody you know, yeah. is glued on, on social media and yeah. stuff. But people are still out flaunting. Like this is where you come to, to try to flex on everybody. Yeah. Just flaunt. The lifestyle it. aspect of exactly. it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like we have it, we have it so good here that there's, there's, it's all first world problems here. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't really meet too many people on a daily basis that have anything else but first world problems. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look at, look at, look at people like Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Those dudes don't look like they got money. But man, do they got a fuck ton of money. I mean, Warren is always in a suit. I mean, Elon Musk is always like in a plain tee yeah. with jeans on. The same thing with Bill Gates. You know, he has his uh, yeah. his, his, his uh, V-neck sweater with a polo under and khakis. Yep. You know, like yep. they, they don't look. I mean, it's not the, the point is not to. I mean, yes, if you like your designer clothes, go ahead by all means. Yeah. But not at the cost of your financial, you know, capability. Because what are you doing? You, you, you're paying all this money. To look good for that people to look good for people that don't even like you. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're Keeping net you're like Jones. you're at a net loss here all the yep. way through. Yep. So I mean, oh God, and I know so many people like that, man. But I just know that you know behind the scenes, I just that you know it, it's just it's just annoying to me. It's annoying to me. But it you is. mentioned you mentioned something um, something. But before we even move on to the next topic, I forgot to address this early on. Um, you're wearing shades inside. <laughs> It's it's uh it's it's uh it's past nine. It's way past nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're wearing shades high. So what, what's going on here? It's a tribute to our boy Mike Avelli. No. <laughs> who, who, why else would I be wearing shades? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. up, Mikey? Yeah, yeah. I'm, trying, I'm, I'm coming after you, boy. He's he's here until the tenth, actually. He's here until the tenth. Oh, he's in Delaware. Yeah, he's still oh, here. Shit. He's still here. He's still, oh, he's man. been here since the first, I think. Yeah. So he's here with family for the holidays and stuff like that. That's awesome. But why That's are you awesome. wearing shades? So I'm wor- it's not it's not really a tribute to Mikey, but mm-hmm. I, I, w- I would like it to be that. But unfortunately, it's not. I ended up getting a eye surgery, LASIK. Which- sorry, sorry, just just uh, the hands off the mic, so it doesn't cover what you're saying. Oh, that yeah, might yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did the same thing on your episode. You're going like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm rapping over here. You know? yeah, I've always, I have big dreams. All right, Don't eight, judge me. all right, eight mile. <laughs> all right, yeah. So you Mom, got a surgery. Okay. Yeah. So I ended up getting. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting a surgery for yeah. my eyes. It's called LASIK. I think most people who hear that are familiar with exactly what that is. I was a nearsighted. Um, my eyes were nearsighted for ever, pretty much ever since I can remember at this point. It's been about 14, 15 years. At the point I had LASIK, 
which was um, a little under a month ago, I was at a negative six on both eyes, which uh, if you're familiar with, with blindness and, and, and nearsightedness, you know that that's pretty, it's pretty high up there. Most people I meet who are nearsighted are like negative three, like Christian Reyes, he's negative three. Oh, shit. Okay. You know, I, I, a couple other people I know, they're, they're not negative six. They're, you know, anything below that. Uh, I've only ever met one other person who was blinded to me and they were like a negative nine or something. Holy crap. And, and it just, uh, uh, there's a lot of factors that come into play. I think what, the blinder you get, the more dangerous it is to get LASIK. So I ended up getting the surgery. It was, it, it's, it's a pretty seamless surgery. It, it's easy. It, it, it's painless. And it's like 15 minutes. It's insane how quick they, they do it. And there was like four other people in front of me. They were just knocking us out quick. Jeez. It was like, you know, I one went in there and the machine sounds like a, a welding machine. If you can imagine it, okay. it's scary. Okay. You know, like a welding machine is like, it sounds scary, man. It sounds scary. And yeah, I just hear the, you know, the machine noises and then, and then like five minutes later, next, you know, like they're just churning us out. So what they do pretty much is they, they, they take, they take a laser and they zap your cornea. So right before they do that, they cut a flap on the exterior of your eyeball, which which I believe is called your your cor- it's called your cornea cornea. Yes, because it's yeah. it's a corneal flap. Okay. So so they the exterior of your eye is called the cornea. They cut a flap and then they zap your retina with a laser, which is like it has a three D mapping that they that they do all that stuff before your actual surgery. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they zap it, and once they're done zapping it, they close the flap back up, and you can, as soon as you get up from the table, you can you can see, Dang. Not, you can see what well, you can see way better than you could, but it's insane. Like things are clear, and and then and then after that, after like forty eight hours, you pretty much have twenty twenty vision. That's how there it worked go. out for me. Yeah. Sheesh. Okay, yeah. is that how you feeling now? Oh yeah, I can see great. Oh man! Yeah, I love okay. it. Okay, yeah. okay, that's awesome. Bro. Yeah, good. Congrats, congrats. I appreciate Super happy that. for you. Appreciate that. Yeah, and so the reason I have sunglasses is because eyes are still a little sensitive to bright lights, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, you know, I, I want to be safe and just keep wearing these yeah. because because it bugs me. So so we'll we'll make sure to contact wherever it is that we go next. So to make sure the paparazzis don't get you. <laughs> yep, exactly. And let's contact Ray Ban so they can sponsor us out here. Okay, man. come on, come on. I wish that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I was just wanted to let that out because I, I didn't want them to think like it is douchebag like doing a freaking <laughs> podcast with shades on. <laughs> nah, man, but it's all good. So so yeah, all right. So we got a, a, a couple other topics we, we could go into. I mean, we, we we covered the loan forgiveness, the interest rates situation. Uh, we also did. Uh, I mean, we then we dove in. in into that a lot but we also have a bunch of other things we could talk about independence day like all that stuff like that we also have ungratefulness in america meta launching threads anything that sticks out to you i guess the most recent was independence day yeah, yeah. for july uh yeah we there's a lot of mixed feelings about that now which is a little sad because yeah. i remember growing up independent fourth of july was like the it was like a pivotal moment in my life growing up it, yeah. i just remember being in my, I grew up on a cul-de-sac in uh, Newcastle, Collins, okay. pa- Collins Park. Cool. Um, yeah. Any you know anybody from around here knows where that's at. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was uh, as you know, kids like I think seven to like twelve years old. I just remember every Fourth of July, all the neighbors would convene. We would all go to whoever was throwing the party on the block, and there just you, go. you know, food, fireworks, drinks. Yeah. yeah. And there was no talk of of oh yeah no 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 fourth of july i don't believe in that or yeah you know or no no america is not a great nation blah 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 i think i think i, I hear a lot of that now and it's it's kind of sad to hear that because i didn't yeah. grow up on those values yeah i grew up with with people who were proud to be yeah. from from, yeah. A, from a nation uh, you know as great as ours yeah and and now it, we're seeing we're seeing the opposite yeah so like I saw this video the other day, and I have to find it so I can pull it up uh, when, when this video comes out. Um, I saw it was this this guy during uh, uh, the Fourth of July. He was uh, walking around with a big American flag, you know, proudly waving it around. And then another, what appeared to be another American person, walked by and said, "God, I can't fucking stand this country." Uh, it's like he like just completely like speaking terrible on it. In my head, in my head, like I, look, I was in my head. I'm like. Then why are you here? Why are you here? Yeah. Why yeah. are you here? Right? If you know, 
I came from Ecuador, right? I, I I was born in Ecuador, came here when I was eight years old, you know, in 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 hopes of uh, you know pursuing the American dream, you know, and and the American dream changes the more you grow, uh, you know. But back then it was typically uh, you know get a house with a family, the white picket fence, and and a puppy. Right. That was typically the, 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 the things that you would see in movies or stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, you, you come here and then you could and then the, you would instill that, you know, as long as you're willing to work hard, you can do whatever you want. You can become whatever you want to be. And nowadays it's just like it, we have situations like that in that video that I was telling you about just completely like speaking terrible in the country. And I'm just like, dude, just go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. If you don't like what you see here, go somewhere else. Right. Because I'm like, I'm like, dude. I, you, 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 I truly believe you can come here and you know what every, each, each and every person has their own obstacles. You know, mm -hmm. there is such thing as, as, as a, as a social, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, a social like, uh, construct of things sometimes. So sometimes some things play socially better for some people than others, mm -hmm. but dude, I I've seen people of all races of all age, uh, like of all professions, like, Reaching like the 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 upper echelons of whatever careers they choose to to be in, and it's possible. But but you know that with that comes politics and all that stuff like that. But yeah. as long as you're able to play the game, you can be something good in this country. 100%. And it pisses me off that I see things like that because you know why? Because then that that leeches over to other people. That lead that mindset leeches over it's to contagious. other people. Then and it, and, it, and it's like a domino effect because yeah. the next person starts saying shit like that, the next person saying shit like that, and then eventually, you know who that gets to? The children. And who's the future of this country? The children. Yep. That's the next generation. Yep. And then and, and and what does that do? It just fucks us. It fucks us in the long term. Right? So it's almost like a hidden internal war that's happening with like the well, it's almost like a civil war is what they call it. But it's like obviously we don't have a situation like France happening right now, you know, where it's like all the riots and all that stuff happening. Or or like, you know, Ukraine and Russia happening like that right right now. But it's like it's our own people. It's like, it's, it's, as you, as you mentioned off the podcast earlier, you said, you know, it's first world problems, first world problems. Yep. First world problems. So what, what do you think about that? I think something I, I want to reference and you may know where I'm getting at is, uh, good times creates, uh, weak men, yeah. right? Weak yeah. men create bad times and then bad times create strong men. It kind of just keeps yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. I think we're at that. I think we've been at good times for so long that everything is just so good here there's people can't find what else to complain about so yeah. they just want to pick on all these on these things that are really insignificant if you think about it in the grand scheme of things and now we're transitioning unfortunately into that into that bad times yeah you know that's where i think we're at i think i think that when you have it so good eventually you you get comfortable and then you know, and I think it's almost like human nature where you, you, you get comfortable with what you have and you kind of seek out more and eventually you become disappointed because you may not be able to reach it. Right. You know, but my thing is like, I, I, I challenge them to do this. If you don't like what's going on in America, if you don't like the people, the, the culture, the politics, whatever the case is. And I look and we're not perfect. We're not at all perfect. No. We fuck up. All, we, we fuck up often. But you know what? We still move forward. We still move forward. I mean, how many fucking different fucking uh, like crazy like social events have we? Like, we just got through a pandemic. You know, we just got through a pandemic. We've yeah. been through so many recessions, depressions, whatever the case, and we got through every time. But here's the thing: I I, I I challenge them to do this. Go to another country for five, ten years, fifteen years. Start a family over there, and then really see really see how much you can get away with there there are places where you can't even publicly give out your opinion on the government because you end up disappearing yeah i mean look at uh, uh what's the one guy who owned alibaba the the one the one the owner of it um fuck i, forgot I, know, his name. I know who you're talking about yeah i, I can't remember his yeah name. so he yeah. he uh he said something about the government because he he was in china right and 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 he was like multi multi i think maybe even billion uh, uh was it jack ma yeah, Jack, Jack Ma. Ma. Yeah, yeah, yes. Jack Ma. Yeah, yes. he might be. Yeah, I'm sure he was a billionaire. He said something about the government. Actually, you know, he goes AWOL. He goes MIA. No one seen. No one saw him. I don't know what his deal is today, but I haven't seen him headline at all, like anymore. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, and and so imagine that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we have a lot of outspoken people in our country because we have we give them platforms. Right. You know, it's called freedom of speech. Yeah, that's what we're known for. I, I, imagine. So I I dare you. I challenge you to go to another country and do that. Be as outspoken as you can be here and do that. 
be apply to as many jobs as you could apply here and see if you can get into anything at all. You know, you, you know what I the most recent thing that came to mind when you say that, Brittany Grimes. Okay. You, you, are you familiar? Uh, no, it is a rainbow. Uh, uh, what is it? The uh, women's professional basketball league. I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With the with the with the weed situation. Where, she where, had was a, it in Russia? She it was in Russia. She yeah. had a weed cartilage on her. Mm-hmm. She had, I don't. I think it was. I think it might have been like one weed cartilage yeah. on her at the airport, which yeah. she forgot. Yeah. I think she was advised, "Hey, don't you know? Don't step foot in Russia with you know with this stuff." And yeah. she was. She forgot about it. You know, mistake. If you if that happened to you here in America, I mean, what they take yeah. you in a back room, they maybe get your fingerprints or right. whatever. You know, they let you go. Right. They, they tried to incarcerate her for I forget how many years. Yeah. They tried to incarcerate her, and Biden had to uh, negotiate a deal where he released. One of like war the, criminals, yes, yeah. not just one. He, really, I, I heard it was one of the worst negotiation deals in the history of. Oh yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Like it was embarrassing. Yeah, to get her back because it, because his administration was being pressured by by uh, certain parties, and the way I look at it is, you see something like that happen in Russia for some weed cartilages, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the, the, these same people. And by the way, she's been on a record for saying she hates America. She's not proud of this country. She's blah blah blah. But look who saved her. I didn't know she was on record for saying that. She was that. on record she for saying She should have kept that. her ass she over there. She was on record for that. I'm sorry. That, you you were you have a full team on you. They tell you not to bring dude. that shit, and you choose to bring that shit. I'm sorry, but look at that. Is 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 the fucking consequences of reactions? And, and 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 I'm not saying she she. I don't think anybody deserves years of incarceration for being caught with you know a, a cartilage of weed. Yeah. But it's it's just it's the principle I'm trying to get at is you see what happens when you when you fuck up a little bit in another yeah. country. In yeah. Another country like Russia. It's a mere example. I mean, it, it was, it, look at fucking uh, what is it? South Korea. Is it with, North. With, uh, North Korea with, with uh, what's his name? Kim Jong Un. King Jong Un. Like, yeah. I mean, look at the shit that goes on there. People will be fucking amazed. People will be so happy for them to fucking escape there because they don't even let them. They literally yeah. have to run away from them in order yeah. to get out of there. Yep. Yep. It's so it's it, it really goes back to that thing you said first world fucking problems. First world problems. And most it, it, a good way to look at it is most people in the world don't have the freedoms we have. The, the grand yeah. population of the world lives way less comfortable than we live yeah yeah no we're dude i mean look at that i mean the jobs everywhere uh housing available i mean i mean obviously how flexible it is is it fluctuates with time in the market whatever the case but it's all here it's all here other countries come to us to 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 yeah. to, to for but that's why it's called the the, the the freaking the land of opportunity yeah that's what it is yeah exactly that's what it is. so go ahead i dare you to go there for five ten years wherever the hell you want to go and then tell me that you had as as many resources as you as you did uh bro, once you were here bro i'm not even i'm i'll cha- i'll go further and challenge and say i'll give a month spend a month okay. in mexico Spend a month, you know, so spend, Venezuela, like yeah. these South these South American countries where you don't have running water at all times, yeah. where you have to go in and hand wash your clothes. Where like I, I, my, my grandparents' house in Mexico, we we don't always have hot water. The we have to heat it up, yeah, well, literally with like right. stick. We have yeah. to, fire. We have to. Say, so it, it's crazy. Like and then I, and then I come here and I see we have all like the littlest thing we we can take. It's so easy to take for granted. But I challenge somebody to go live in Mexico, Brazil, you know, for a month. It, it won't make it. You know, they'll be crying to come back. Dude, it's one huge. <laughs> It's so simple. It's called the United States of America for a reason because yep. everybody comes to us yeah. for everything. Yep. We got people drowning trying to cross borders in here. You know, it's insane. Yeah. 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 But yeah, no, that's my whole thing, especially when I saw that one video with the one person saying that that fucking disgusting comment. It just, yeah. it just pissed me off, man. It, it, it's frustrating to hear this. And you know what's funny? Some of the most proudest and patriotic uh, people who are in this country are foreigners. If you, I don't know if yeah. you noticed that. Yeah. Yeah, I would no. I would agree the same. I mean, yeah. like, even my mom tells me, like, when I see her, my mom still mainly speaks Spanish. Uh, but when I see her, she's like, she's like, oh, you, you, you you've been, uh, you, you're Americanized, <laughs> you know. But she says it uh, in, her, in her Hispanic ways. I'm like, where well, is that an insult or a compliment? You know, <laughs> take so, you whatever way. That's you want, what I'm right? saying. But you know what? It, it, you know, yeah. America has provided me opportunities I will never be able to repay for. You know, yeah. I came here, I built a career, built businesses, and I've been able to get back to my family, to my friends. And been able to do so much more and so much more to do yet because I am here. 
because I am here. Yeah, fuck all that social bullshit. Like, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, no, you can't do it because of this, that, and the other. No, fuck that. If you want it, if you want it, and if you really, really freaking want it, you will you will do what, it, what, what you need to do to get there. Because, you know, if you don't, someone else will. Yep. That's how it works. It's capitalism. Capitalism. That's yes, what sir. it is. So this country, I'm for, you no. know, I'm sorry. Like, let's say... You put in 10 years of work, right? Let's call it 20 years of work. Yeah. And 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 I put in maybe one year of work. Shouldn't you, and, and let's say we have the same product, but you have the superior product just based on how much you've perfected this craft. And sh- shouldn't the obvious thing be that you reap the most benefits out of it and therefore, and you gain all the benefits of financially or whatever the case, shouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. And because uh, I'm, I'm new and uh, you know, I'm only one year and you're 20 years at that's capitalism. You know, you get the best benefit when you bring the most value to the market. It yeah. makes sense and it pays you for it. Right. right. So, I mean, it, it, you know, it's people need to get, get their fucking, what was it saying? Get their panties out of a hose or something like that. Is something that what, like that. Is, yeah. is that what it's saying? Yeah. Grow up here and just get to work. <laughs> get to work. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, uh, uh, something just on a limb here. You know, what I've learned in the past, you know, I've been on a journey for the past seven years uh, with my personal development. Something I would always seek was motivation, right? Mm-hmm. Motivation. Watch the YouTube videos, you know, mm-hmm. Patrick but David, David Goggins, like whatever the kid, whoever, whoever it was, uh, all these relentless guys, yeah. uh, Jocko Willings. Yeah. And they all look great and all, yeah. But, you know, but at some point you don't fucking need motivation. Sometimes you just need to get the fucking work done. Right. You're not going to like everything you do I would, at all. I would argue most of the things you do, you don't want to do them. Right. You don't want to do them. And, and you know, you know what, what's conflict in that? You know, uh, we were very, for, uh, a lot of people were very fortunate uh, with the pandemic in terms of being able to work from the concept of working from home. Yeah. Right yeah. now, it's a lot more flexibility than ever. So a lot of people are now more than ever seeking fulfillment in their job, right? Yup. But to anything, there's a utility to it, right? Read Malcolm Gladwell's book of of uh, David and Goliath. You know, he uses the the utility curve to, uh, for anything because now you know they're seeking so much uh, workplace fulfillment that that you know uh, it, it's almost like harms them in a way. It almost harms them because they're not getting the same amount of work done. And any time you ask them to do something that's even slightly out of what they typically do is the biggest fucking inconvenience. Mm. Is the biggest inconvenience. Mm. And that's a, I'm like, bro, no, get to fucking work. You yeah. know, we're, we're a company. If I ask you to come in, and that, this is why the one thing I like about Elon Musk whole Twitter thing of uh, getting people to work in office, right? And I yeah. work from home. This is coming from someone that works from home. Yeah. Um, uh, is, is, is that, you know, you, I, I truly think that you can get just as much work done, if not more, in the office than you do at home. There's a lot of distractions at home. You're too comfortable. Some people work out of their bed. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's, and at the end of the day, I'm sorry, we're a company. We need to make money. Right. If you're on your ass not getting the work done, you know, that fucks up our revenue. That yeah. fucks up our statements. That fucks yeah. up, you know, then investors become upset. Then, then, then we, we run into other financial risks. Now, now, now our share price is not going lower. And next thing you know, we're filing chapter 11 bankruptcy. <laughs> exactly. You know, and yeah. then you're out of a job. Yep. Simply because you just wanted to be a little bit happier at work. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Sometimes you just need to get the fucking work done, and you're not gonna like everything that you do, right? And you know what? That makes it easier for the hustlers today. That makes it even easier for the hustlers today because the hustlers don't care about the work; they just care about doing it. About doing it and yeah. the results. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So now more than ever, to those hustlers, this is the opportunity for you to stand out and shine. If you don't go into the office that much because so many people are working from home, go to the office. Because yeah. you know who's at the office? The executives. The executives. Right? The executives, yeah. right? Yeah. So now you, you now there's, you have a higher likely chance for them seeing you. So now you're out there more. Exactly. Especially if you work for a huge company. Yeah. If you work for a huge company, now, you, now you're exposed. Even at the intern level. You know, if you start going to the office and your boss is there, now the boss sees you more than, than, than your, your manager in between. Both of you, like, yeah. so it's like just Agreed. take take advantage of that right now. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I personally find myself way more productive when I go into the office. Yeah. Yeah. I tried the work from home thing. I, I I did it for a good amount of time, and I I can conclude me personally, I'm way more productive in the office. I think it goes back down to us just being social creatures, mm-hmm. and and our coworkers just uh, helping us and sharpening us as well. Yep. You know. 
Yeah, no, no, it's, and that's and that's a good point that you touched on because after the pandemic and so much working from home, the moment we got back out, it was weird. It was awkward. It was, it was yeah. a little awkward. Like now we're yeah. all of a sudden, you know, out in public. So we're back together. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Uh, oh <laughs> shit, there's other humans other than me in here. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But uh, anything else you want to go into that before we move on to the next thing? No, I'm good. It's gonna be just like shorter topics. So like moving, like I think from here on out. Oh yeah. no, we, we we have some of your stuff too. Uh, how about we go into um, let's see. Meta launching Threads app. I know you just found out about this I app. I just found out. Yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like it's like Troy's active on social media, but really only for business, right? Yeah, so he much. he misses like I don't know he on these type of things. So literally just a couple of nights ago, uh, Meta uh, launched a, comp, a competition to Twitter called Threads, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And Threads is literally. Instagram's or Facebook's version of, of Twitter. Right. It's little, and you don't have limit. As far as I know, you don't have limit on characters. You don't have a uh, limit on the amount of tweets you can, you can, put, uh, you can watch in a day. Cause yeah. that's literally something Elon Musk put into effect recently. Like, I, like probably in the same week. Limit on characters. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Uh, so like, it's like he put like, I think it was a limit on how many, uh, tweets you could view in a day. So you're not endless, endlessly scrolling. I oh. think, I don't know what the exact purpose of it was, Yeah, yeah. but then after that, literally right after fucking uh, Zuckerberg comes out with uh, with uh, what's it called Threads, yeah, and then within two hours of launch, they reach over a million users. Jesus, over that's even faster than Chat GPT got a million users, and w- wow. it took it took Chat G- Chat GPT five days to reach five uh, to reach one million users. <laughs> it took Netflix three point five years to reach one million users. It took Threads two hours. That's to reach insane. 1 million users. And now they're over probably like 10 million now. Insane. So that's essentially what people are going to do now. And, um, and, and, and something that was discovered too while, while they were uh, messing around with the threads. Because, you know, when it's like so out of nowhere and you get such a reach in such a short amount of time, you know, mistakes are willing to ha- are, are bound to happen. So I guess what was coming out was that someone tried to delete their, uh, I'm not sure if it was the app or the account uh, yeah. threads. Yeah. And, and it actually deleted their Instagram as well. Like their Instagram, their Instagram account. Man. So, so people have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, raging a little bit about that because, you know, mm-hmm. it's not something. And if it wasn't writing somewhere in the terms of agreement, you know, people aren't watching fucking, you know, reading yeah. the terms of agreement right. type of thing. Right. But have you guys heard about the new Threads app? What do you think of it? You're not into Posty, yeah. So uh-huh. we're asking our, our boy Reese, who's in the background here, uh, about the Threads app. He's like more behind the scenes kind of guy, so he says he's not into it at all. Have you heard of Threads? You notice it today, yeah. Like it's so fresh. Like Jack, I, you just found out about it too. Yeah, I just happened to be up late one night, yeah. and all of a sudden I see I'm on someone's page. I forget. I think it was, I think it was uh, Layla Hormozzi's page. Al- oh yeah. right, his wife. Which just sounds kind of weird. That Alex- I'm, I'm I'm on a female's page late at night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was watching Alex Hormozzi content and yeah. it ended up his wife's page. All right, that's yeah. what it was. Oh, okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not sus at all. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and uh, what's it called? All of a sudden, her Instagram profile, I see a number on there. Yeah, right? I click yeah. on it, and it's like, oh, this is your thread number or something like that. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yep. So, and it, and it launches, and it's like, this is literally looks like Twitter. Like, my first thread was literally, is this like, Meta's approach to Twitter, like against Twitter, <laughs> yeah. And so then now, even Elon Musk uh, uh, is uh, apparently Twitter is looking to sue uh, Threads or or Meta. I guess the, the parent company would make more sense. Um, and, and I think there was I don't know sure I don't know if it was his tweet or a parody account, mm-hmm. but he said something in the lines of, you know, uh, influence is fine, copying is not, right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, did did you ever use Twitter at all that much? I maybe used it a couple of times mm-hmm. back in the day. Never really been too heavy mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other Twitter users here? Twitter? No, no Twitter. 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 Yeah. I, I even I didn't use Twitter that much until recently. I started using it more for like, you know, uh, posting what I did on Twitter on Instagram. Yeah. Kind of go with that layout a little bit. Right. But now with threads, it's like it's so much easier because you just have to click on it. It automatically takes you there. Yep. So you don't have to do any additional steps. They made it super easy for made you to use it. Super easy. Super easy. So, I mean, that's why they got so many users in such a short amount of time. Right, right. But also, 
that leads into um, uh, what's it called? Zuckerberg's and Musk's ah, fight. Yeah, the brawl. Yeah, did you guys hear about that? That uh, Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are, are potentially going to get into uh, an exhibition match. Oh yes. Look at that, man! Like the two, so, like two, some of the well, the richest man on earth with one of the richest man on earth, yeah, gonna yeah. go in toe to toe in a, in a fight battle in a in a one on one fight, and I think that Dana White is hosting it through the UFC name. That's insane! I think That's that insane. all the proceeds are gonna go towards some sort of charity. Yeah. And here's the rumor that I I think so I heard a couple rumors. One of them being that it's gonna be UFC 300. What's the latest UFC event? I don't know right now. You know, it's pretty nice that I have the computer right here. I gotta, I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie to you. Uh, the most recent UFC event is, let's see. You know what? It's taking too long. I'm not going to worry about it. But they were saying around, uh, okay, so I'm seeing Saturday, Ju- Saturday, July 8th. Tomorrow is UFC 290. Oh. Rumor was that they might see it. And these things happen like like a couple times a month. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, uh, that that might potentially be happening as early as UFC 300. So we're talking this year, mm. a few months from now. Yeah. And the other rumor I heard that it's potentially happening at what's it called again? The, oh, the uh, the Coliseum. The in Rome. fucking Coliseum in the Rome. Coliseum in Rome. The man. Coliseum in Rome. The Imagine rumors. Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk yeah. going at it at the fucking Coliseum. <laughs> Don't get more dramatic than that, man. <laughs> you can't make this shit you up, can't, man. You can't. Dude, ima- they're so rich. Like, they're just doing side missions at this point. Yeah, that's, that's why li- I thought it was a troll at first. <laughs> that's so, literally it's it. Real, yeah. Dude, fucking eat. Look, eat. Look, Zuckerberg is launching Thread. He has Meta. He yeah. has WhatsApp. I mean, no, yeah. he has he has Facebook. He has WhatsApp. He has Instagram. Yeah. You know, over running the parent company, uh, 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 Meta. Yeah. Then you have Elon Musk, who's running, uh, uh, what is it, Tesla, uh, Neuralink, uh, uh, Cyberlink is, I think, the internet one. I forget. The satellite. I forget what it is. Uh, the, the, what is it called? The Boring Company. Boring, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the, the tunnel one. He's I think, got so much yeah, it's like on. It's like, bro, it's yeah. like, have you not had enough? <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's, he's, con- he's on a conquest. Man. Dude, it, it's crazy, but I'd be, I'd be, I, 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 I might pay. I would pay to watch that fight. I, I would pay to watch that fight. You know, yeah. it's going to charity. Call it a donation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe somewhere you could play it in the tax. You know, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, what do you think about that? Who, who do you have your money on that? I mean, I'd be capping if I say I wouldn't pay to fight to watch yeah, that fight because yeah. I, I would, I definitely would. Well, and, then we all pitch in, and just that yeah. way we don't have to multiply pay by yeah. like a ton. I'm not, so I'm kind of gonna guess on on the, each one of their stats, but I believe Mark Zuckerberg's is 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 about five eight five nine, and I know, okay. I know Elon Musk is is like six three. Or is something. he? So, okay. So there's a there's a significant size difference, yeah. you know. But I do understand that uh, Mark Zucks has, uh, you know, like a black belt or something. Yeah. And he does jujitsu. I'm not too sure on what uh, Musk practices or whether he practices anything at all or just smokes weed with Rogan. But that's all I'm (laughs) familiar with. Yeah, so it literally, and, and Zuckerberg recently just won a jiu-jitsu tournament. The CNN article here says, Mark Zuckerberg wins gold and silver, gold and silver medals in his first jiu-jitsu competition. Yeah. Imagine that, bro. Right. Sheesh. Well, that'd be crazy if he took him down, because uh, it sounds like Musk is a lot bigger than him. Yeah, yeah. And, and Musk, I saw a picture of him recently with uh, none other than the UFC Hall of Famer's George St. Pierre. Uh, does that do you know George St. Pierre by any chance? Heard, Did you watch I've, him back in his day? Yeah, I, I I didn't really watch him, but I've yeah. heard him. I've heard of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, he was can. I mean, he fought along. He fought with like people like like B J Penn. Uh, 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 what's it called? That's like a bunch of people. Tom Hughes. Uh, you know, shout out Tom. He's going through uh through uh some health challenges right now. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, it's like uh, George St. Pierre was one, probably one of my favorite UFC fighters when I was watching. How I remember yeah. watching him. I think I forget what Ultimate Fighter it was what yeah. season, but against uh, uh Josh Koscheck. It was so good though, but man, I can't, I can't imagine that fight, man. That that should be very, very interesting. I would yeah. say that just based on their skill, it would be Zuckerberg. It would be like right. a David and Goliath that's type of I'm, thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, Elon being thinking. the Goliath and yeah. and Zuck being uh, yeah. uh, the the what's it called, David. I think I think in one parody tweet, I even saw him mentioning calling him a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, okay. man. So, uh, so yeah. Aside from that, um, you know, you were telling us that you know you could go in potentially. This kind of going on a, on a completely different topic mm-hmm. um, about something about your experiences with MLMs. Yeah. So I did want to touch on that. I've uh, I've recently been reached back out. But what, what's what's an MLM to begin with? A multi level marketing business. 
uh, I guess like business model. Yeah. Model. Yeah. Yeah. MLM is, is what it's known for. It's uh, it's pretty much a, a business where you, you get paid to recruit people into your business model. Mm-hmm. And the more people you recruit, the more the more commission you build up uh, during a certain time frame. And then you also sell certain products for a company that you're working for. So I'm not sure if we want to get into names here, but... Uh, if it's uh, like... It, let's leave names out of it for now. I mean, most people can guess exactly what I'm talking about. It's probably one of the most well-known MLM companies. Oh, you're talking about like company names, not like individual names. Yeah, yeah, company yeah, yeah. names. I mean, most people can guess, you know, like the biggest uh, MLM name in the area sells a bunch of uh, uh, normal commodities that people purchase, like household items and stuff. Okay. And uh, I, it had been years since I had been approached by somebody in that in that business format. And it's yeah. funny because it just happened the other day and it kind of brought back some nostalgia because uh, there was at some point in my life, there was a, there was some times where I, I was caught up in that and very close to joining with like three different people. Yeah. And it just, it just brought back some bad memories cause I don't have a good experience with those. It's, uh, I think personally that it's, it's some shady business practices and, and a lot of people think it's some kind of pyramid scheme okay. as it's put out there. Uh, you know, I, I know of some people who are successful in it, but not much. Yeah. Most of the people I know who do it are, you know, just everyday people who kind of just sell an item here or there. And most of the time they just really want to recruit you. So I, I I don't think, I don't have anything good to say about it, but I wanted to just kind of put out, put it out there. And like, I want people to be aware when, when somebody's trying to pitch something to you and they're making it super secretive and they're saying, you know, they're trying to sell you the world, but they don't want to give you exact details of any company names. They don't want to give you a business partner's name and they keep using certain certain buzzwords like if you meet with me for this business opportunity we're going to chat about it with my business partner at Starbucks at Panera but I can't get into it too much with you right now it's got to be you know it's got to be in person I anything that sounds shady like that I would I would stay away from that to be honest but again it's at it's at the, the viewer's discretion yeah I'm just saying that's my experiences with it don't do it yeah, yeah yeah no I hear you man I mean I've had some experiences myself and you know that's a, that's a good thing about you know uh, in being in business is you know you get to choose what business you want to buy into and what business you don't want to buy into. Yeah, one of the many freedoms you get to do in America. Exactly. Goes, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. you know, no one's shoving down your throat. What you need to be working on, you know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I think we know we 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 actually covered most. This is going to be our closeout one. Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm. Mm. <sighs> I thought we weren't allowed to talk about these things. <laughs> well, we're not going to necessarily talk about the the, the specific uh, mental health awareness month, uh, you know, occasion. Yeah. But yes, last June was uh, supposedly uh, men's mental health awareness month. God, that's like it's kind of like a tongue twister. If you say it like five times, you probably <laughs> mess that up every time. Um, you know, and. You know, I'm on, I'm on social media often. Uh, you know, I I I uh, I'm always trying to keep a social presence. You know, especially with the podcast and Apex and all that stuff like that. I'm always like working on content, um, and and you know, with that, you find a lot of people that are always like, you know, I guess for lack of better terms, being activist, right? Yeah, they're always saying, you know, this month is for this, this month is for that. There's this day, there's that day, there's this day, there's that day, and. And and it's the same people, you know, and I don't know how I'm going to say this, but I I found it mostly in the in the, in the female audience that you know that 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 talk down on men a lot these days, mm-hmm. that they're so very voiced in their opinion, and God bless them for that because that's a freedom we have in this country, right? Um, that that speaks so poorly on men, but yet you know, give so many shout outs to different things, you know, whether it be the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQT plus community, yeah. uh, disability, uh, community, uh, you know, other, other things. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I did not notice at that? all last month? Huh? <clears throat> and this includes for both genders, but I was very surprised by the female specifically. Uh, and, and this is not, obviously this is not a hundred percent anything. There's always like a small group that does, I did not see a single person, like like that I that I personally knew, like here in Delaware, posting about Men's Mental Health Awareness Month, and and I thought, I thought to myself, how fucking convenient, <laughs> how fucking convenient. Mm-hmm. One and two, honestly, I I, I low key, you know, almost in my head, I'm like, you know what, fuck you. 
And you know why? It's it's because you want to bring attention to so many other things, but then the moment that you know man get their uh, their month, you know it, there's no attention to it. But yet we have, you know, men's uh, depression rate. It's the highest it's ever been. Yeah. Probably along, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but, you know, probably the same thing with around, like, suicide rates in comparison, like, in gender-wise. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's just, and I thought to myself, of like, man, how fucking hypocritical of you, you know? And then this, like, you know, sometimes I repost stuff on Instagram, and more so just to repost content, right? Yeah. And the amount of, specifically, females that, that, that try to, like, gaslight me in my DMs mm, mm. just because I'm voicing an opinion. Right. Right. You know, they're very quiet when it comes to acknowledging challenges yeah. of men. I bet. I bet. And that, that, that pisses me off. You know why it pisses me off? Because they want to talk about equality. Right? Yeah. They want to talk about fairness for all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and, but then when it comes to, in this specific subject, us, it's like, no, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck me. You yeah. know? No, it's just like, you know what? You know what I notice about these people that are, that are, that are super activists and all this stuff? What's that? <sighs> They aren't doing shit. They are not doing shit. I, I I look at their lives, at least from what I've known or seen, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck are you doing with yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, they want to talk about their big advocate for this movement or that movement or that movement. But okay, what are you doing? Are you volunteering? Are you donating? Are 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 you actually like like doing some sort of movement to really bring that freaking message across, like to the table? What are you doing? No. No, they they ain't doing shit, dude. I've at this point I've don't I've donated like a few several thousand dollars like across like I don't know how many char charities at this point, and it's like because I believe in the in the, in the movement and mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I, you know what they say the best type of charity is is an is anonymous or something like that. So I don't really go out there and talk about it, but it's like these same people that don't do anything that fucking you know are living like a, like like a, like bums, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. going in there being keyboard warriors on their yeah. fucking you know f yeah. you know whatever the case, they're out there having having the loudest opinion, and and not not only the loudest opinion but the most un, unqualified opinion, and I'm just thinking and, and you know what, I'd be okay with it if. If if they were as fair to themselves as they were as if they were as fair to others as they are to themselves, yeah. in voicing their opinions, yeah. But God forbid, God forbid you have a different opinion. It's it, it's a double standard. God forbid, dude. I mean, you know, I've noticed where I've been in discussions with people and 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 I know and I, and I've learned to do something that has that has paid me off very well as I've gotten older. You know, a long time ago, when I used to work somewhere, in uh, somewhere, and I asked one of my managers that would always get shit for no reason, just because they they dealt with it in ignorant employees. Mm -hmm. I, I asked her like, "How do you do it? Mm -hmm. How do you not like snap at them?" And then, and she told me something that stuck with me forever. She says, "She told me you learn to pick your fights, Emilio." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Damn, okay, all right." They didn't fully got what that meant at that time. And and then as time passed and, and I started growing and I started dealing with more and more people, I started realizing what she meant. Not everybody deserves your time or energy, bro. So when these so when I'm in conversations with people and and um they they are voicing their opinion, you know, you you know, you let them talk, you have a proper discourse, but then it's your turn to talk and you present your belief and, and what you want to put out there, it's middle, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. no. Da, right. da, 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 da. Right. You immediately get gaslit here. Bah, 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 bah. It's like a little kid. It's like, a tantrum. okay, so are we having a proper discourse or, or, or I'm not your fucking therapist. Yeah. You're not paying me to listen to you. You want to sit down and you want to come to the table. You want to have a discourse. You better be willing to listen as much as you're willing to talk. If anything, you should be willing to listen more than you are willing to talk because you are given two ears and one fucking mouth for a yep. reason, as they say. Yep. Listen twice as much as you talk. So that's what that pisses me off about the Mental Health Awareness Month because the same people that walk on social media like, like oh, like this, we bring pride, this, oh, politics, this, oh, this government, this, this representative, here's a piece of shit, yada, 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 yada. But then we have something so so important. Like uh, majority of our leaders are men here, you know. They they're not. It's like no. It's fuck us. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why it's insane that that it's gotten to this point. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know men's mental 
what is it health awareness month yeah. i didn't even know that exactly that was a thing honestly. I, I didn't know that either yeah. until like the month happened and i started hearing about it yeah. i saw more people preaching up other other celebrating other kind of days than actually shouting like so it's not like they weren't active in the month yeah they, they were acknowledging other holidays right. throughout the month right but not at all the the awareness stuff so yeah th- that that i mean what do you think about that I, I think it comes down to what I said earlier. It's just a double standard where we're expected to uh, shout out other other things that are going on. But then when we want to talk about something that's that uh, acknowledges our struggles and we're uh, called toxic for it or where, yeah. you know, we're frowned upon because, oh, no, we, you, you shouldn't, you know, you, you guys are rocks all the time. But I don't think it really works that way. And, and like what you mentioned earlier, suicide rates are all time high. You know, everything is going through the roof for for men in terms of negative outcomes, and nobody and nobody cares and nobody acknowledges that there's even a, me- a mental health awareness month. I, I I haven't heard literally, and I and I listen to podcasts pretty much all day long. Yeah, all day long. I have heard no mention of it. Yeah, no mention of it. Barely any mention of it on on, on social media. Like I was aware about it. Yeah, but it's and and here's the thing: some people just don't know, right? But then there's the people that do, and then choose to voice everything. But what would be the one thing to make it all fair? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so and you know, and it's it, just it exposes a very obvious agenda that's that's pushing other things, um, like LGBTQ stuff. You know. Yeah. That that whole I think it's the whole left wing agenda, and um, I I don't agree with it. I, I don't think it's right. And I don't think it should be. I, I understand. I, I respect LG, LGBTQ. I, I have no problem with it. We have friends that are yeah. you know in that community, and they're amazing people. But I don't think it should be allowed in in elementary schools, yeah. even you know middle schools. Yep, high school it's arguable, but it, it shouldn't be in play in a, in a children's life that early on. Yeah, I don't think they should have anything to do with that at that age. Mm-hmm. And you know what I was just hearing? I just heard this today at uh, at my barber shop with my boy Chris. Uh, his coworker is also named is Chris. I, I'm not sure if this is how accurate this is, but he, his wife. Uh, I think his wife is a teacher, one of Chris's co-workers' uh, wife, and he mentioned that if a kid goes to their guidance counselor, uh, and I think this is like middle school and high school, and they mentioned to their guidance counselor that they're not sure if if they were meant to be a boy or girl, you know, whatever they are, that guidance counselor is now not allowed to disclose that to that kid's parent. They're not allowed to. So... In my mind, I'm like, what is this attorney client privilege? These are kids. You have you. That's something that would be the first thing you should disclose to the parents. But you're going to keep it's a privilege. It's, yeah. it's privileged. It's insane. What's your guidance counselor going to do? <laughs> right. You know, that's what dude. And and, and that's I, we're definitely going to have to touch into that in another episode. But I used to be at a point where, you know, I wanted my kids to go to public school because, you know, it's what I went to and I learned a lot from it. Yeah. But now it's like I'm afraid to even for them to even be in private school because of the agenda that's being pushed through the education system. And here's the one thing I was talking to somebody about the other real quick, and I would like to close out on this. All these huge companies that that seem like the and, and and schools that seem like they're very friendly towards this or this or that. Yeah. Do not forget, they are a business first. They are a business first. They're going to do what they need to do to make the most money. Yeah, right. Right? Yep. You know, until, you know, there's, it becomes a legal conflict. But even then, so when you go to their websites and you see that they're woke about this, like, they're like oh, we're friendly this, friendly that, friendly that, that gets you right right in there. Oh, because you know what? I connect with it. Yeah. And now I'm this closer to becoming a close to them. Right, and you, and you know what they, and you know what, and you, you know what this looks like. So this is what the companies do. And they're like, oh yeah, we we we're friendly this, we're friendly that, and and you know we we care about this person or that person. But yeah. then they're turning around and they're telling their their shareholders, we just made a shit ton of more money because we said this, and now our ESG score is fucking gonna sky, skyrocket because we're more inclusive and yeah. all that shit like that. Yeah. And now it's like a tax incentive for them. It, it, it's what you said. They're following the money. They're telling the people what they want to hear. So it go. I'm not sure if you heard, and I actually think I heard this on uh, PBD's podcast. But Target was selling shirts with mm-hmm. suggestive uh, items on there. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it, but it, but it comes down to them. The money know, is what the people want. And it's it the, money. the money. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
I, you know, I was having a conversation with a, with a buddy of mine while I was in Iceland a few years ago. Yeah. When we were talking about the excess of information that's out there. Yeah. And and we were just talking about you know how to, how to handle it. Yeah. And three years three years ago we had this. No, not three years ago. Was it three years ago? A year ago? Two years ago? Fuck, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I think now more than ever, people need to revisit their basic. English course in college or their basic English <laughs> course in high school. What do I mean by that? What do they teach you in school when they write when you write a paper to find reliable resources, mm-hmm. right? That are credible, that are credible, that have a for they come from a reputable company, yeah. yada 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 yada. Yeah. Now more than ever, that's what people need to fall back on because there's an abundance of information out there and not what everything that everyone says is one not true and two in your best interest. Yeah. So people now, and you know, because you know what happens? I've had people send me the, uh, some some information about what the fuck. I, and then here's the here's the million dollar question. Whatever you hear, whatever you hear, some, some crazy shit that someone told you, mm-hmm. that someone tells you, ask them this question. Where did you hear that? If they hit you with the internet, fuck them. And two... Here's the, here's the one I've got. I shit you not, I've not got, I've gotten this. Someone told me not to go to New York because something was happening. Something crazy was going to happen that weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where'd you hear this? They're like, TikTok. Mm, Jesus. TikTok. Yeah. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. All right. I'm like, and then the person sends me the link. I open the link. It's some bullshit conspira- conspiracy theorist. And guess what the username uh, uh, of TikTok was? Mm. King Kong. So you think I'm going to listen to King Kong radio on fucking TikTok about some fucking political, like some potential fucking uh, terrorist attack in NYC? Fuck you. Go, go, go read a book. Yeah. You know, go read yeah. a book. Get your shit together. Go yep. get a hobby. Go, go, go learn something. Right. Because yep. yep. that's what's happening today. There's too much information and not enough knowledge for people to know how to pick right from wrong. So yep. educate yourself. You know, yep. you don't need to go to academia to do it. Just understand that not, not everything you see is what it is what it appears to be. I think it, you it, like one of our uh, a, a person we listen to who we believe highly and says you got to be perspicacious. Mm-hmm. Like I I would actually argue most of the things I get most of my information is is online, but it, it's not about whether you got it online or not. It's about corroborating it and making sure it's accurate and making sure the source is good right. and not a TikTok you know from from King Kong. <laughs> you know, it, it, if, if I find something online, I, I'll double check it on, on different sites and make right. sure that it's uh, it, it, it's being it's consistent. Yeah. At the very least. You yeah. know, so it, it really just comes down to you doing your due diligence, being smart yeah. and logical about it and just making sure that you're not being gullible and, and listening to what's on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And don't just look for what you want to hear, but also what you don't want to hear. That it's the best way to have a biased approach to where things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, because, be open to contradicting, um, you know, thoughts on, on exactly, what you have. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And like I said, two ears, one mouth. Yep. So. Yep. All right. Well, Troy, we covered a lot today. I mean, we talked about the legi- the, the the bill being overturned by the House mm-hmm. uh, with the student loan forgiveness mm-hmm. uh, program thing. We talked about, you know, the... The, the ungratefulness in America today within the, and like and all the stuff that we talked about Independence Day yeah. we talked about the interest rate situation we yeah. talked about uh, what else did we talk about your MLM uh, recent approach yeah yeah just a bunch of stuff man yeah. so I yeah. mean thank you so much for being here of course uh, where of can course. people find you uh, you can find me on Instagram at Troy Sells DE find me on Facebook at We Do Sold and uh, you can Google my name and my information will come up Damn, he said Google me. Just Google my name. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Troy, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and share this video with all your friends. This was a very different episode. It's typically more guest focused. We touch more recent topics here and, and some things that some people just wouldn't touch on. And I think that now more important it's more important than ever to not hold your tongue, learn how to really communicate your beliefs as long as they're solid mm-hmm. because if you stay shut and you let people that are, that are not credible speak that's just going to turn into a horrible domino effect and i do not want to be a part of that i do not want my family to grow on that and i definitely do not want to go i don't want america to go down that future so like i said if you haven't already like comment and subscribe till next time ep podcast is out thank you brother my guy
Appreciate you. Woo.